So today we are in our second to last, our penultimate lesson of the semester. And we're going to talk about human prenatal development. So what is happening with pregnancy in both the fetus and the mother? So pregnancy lasts about nine months, about 266 days from fertilization to birth. Obviously, this varies. There's a wide range of time in which babies can be born and still survive, especially with modern medical advances. But development begins in the fallopian tube when the egg is fertilized, and after about 24 hours, that zygote has divided to form a two-celled embryo that will continue to undergo cleavage as it passes through the fallopian tube, channeled along by the cilia and peristaltic waves of the fallopian tube. And once it reaches the uterus, it's going to float there for several days, continuing continuing to divide. And at this point, it is in the blastocyst stage. So just as a review of those different steps, okay, so it is going to start as a zygote fertilized right in the fallopian tube after ovulation has occurred in about a 24-hour window, right? Then it's going to start dividing as it travels down that fallopian tube. And when it reaches the uterus, it's called a blastocyst. And eventually it will implant. It implants about on day seven. And that is when we consider it now an embryo once it is fully implanted into the endometrium. So here we have a 12 day human embryo already implanted into the lining of the uterus. One of the first things that developing embryo needs to do is develop a placenta, okay? So the placenta is a very special organ that's gonna allow nutrients to travel from the mother to the baby and waste to travel from the baby to the mother. The baby cannot breathe on its own. It cannot like crawl out and pee outside of the mother. Okay, so there's gotta be some exchanges happening. So the embryo combines tissues with the mother's uterus to form the placenta. It's a really interesting organ. It's the only one that's like two different organisms form one organ. So the placenta is the site of nutrient, gas, and waste exchange. I've included a kind of animated video on Canvas that shows you the 3D structure of this organ. Uh, the placenta also secretes hormones that help maintain pregnancy through a complete term. And all of the vessels that branch out for gas exchange connect into the umbilical cord, which is the main um, set of arteries and veins bringing blood to the embryo and then back out. So if we look at some uh, images of this, you can see that the embryo is attached to the endometrium, but it has some fetal tissue and then some maternal tissue. And that in between here, there's this space where the blood from the mother is kind of going and bathing the fetal cells. So again, here you can see that there is some fetal tissue and it's bathed in all of the maternal blood and the blood is um, exchanging nutrients with the fetal fetus. So the, the reason why the maternal blood can exchange oxygen to the fetus is because the fetus actually produces a different type of hemoglobin called fetal hemoglobin and it has a higher oxygen affinity than adult hemoglobin, which means it wants oxygen even more than adult hemoglobin does, chemically. So essentially what's gonna happen is oxygen is going to flow from the maternal hemoglobin towards the fetal hemoglobin that has a higher binding capacity. So essentially the fetal hemoglobin pulls oxygen off the maternal hemoglobin, travels to the embryo, gives oxygen to the whole embryo, travels back out to the placenta, and gets rid of its carbon dioxide there and pulls more oxygen off of the maternal hemoglobin. All right, so sadly though, despite the fact that it is a barrier and blood is not flowing directly from the mom to the child, a lot of different chemicals that are in the mother's system pass across that placenta. Now this is good because it allows the baby to get all the vitamins and nutrients it needs, but let's say there's some alcohol in the mother's blood, that alcohol will also affect the development of the baby. And if there are high levels of alcohol throughout a pregnancy's term, that can cause fetal alcohol syndrome, which dramatically impacts a child's Ms. development. Please come to front office. Ms. Brickhouse, please come to front office. Now, 
not only alcohol can pass across, um, other prescription drugs can also pass across. There's a whole list of drugs that are to be avoided by pregnant mothers so that they don't affect the fetus. Antibodies can also pass from a mother to a child. And, you know, this is not all a bad thing. The baby needs some antibodies for protection. But let's say the mother has an antibody against the Rh factor on a child's blood. If the mother is Rh negative and the child is Rh positive, that can cause Rh disease. And some viruses can even pass across that placenta. Not very many, but a few. So CMV is a herpes virus pretty asymptomatic, usually in the mother and the child, but it can cause some problems if the child has a lower or suppressed immune system. But a lot of babies are born with that um, without many symptoms. You might not even know. About 10% of the population is thought to have that virus and pass it on. Zika virus is also highly relevant for childhood development because Zika virus, it's mosquito-borne, kind of like malaria but it can pass across that placenta and dramatically affect the development of a child. It can cause birth defects such as microcephaly, which is the development of a small head that carries a lot of other neurological and muscular effects for the children. That outbreak in about three, four years ago in um, Brazil had a huge impact on a lot of children that were born during that time. So just as a review of the stages and timeframes before we talk about the fetus and then the effects on the mother, it goes, oh, zoinks, my baby eats fast. Okay, so ovum, zygote, morula, blastocyst, embryo, fetus. And the baby is only considered a fetus once it kind of looks human. Okay, once it kind of has that, that body shape of a toes and a head and eyes and arms. Okay, so... After about nine weeks, it's considered a fetus, and the first trimester of pregnancy is about weeks one through 13. A lot of the basic um, developmental like groundwork is laid down, so all of the frameworks of organs, cartilage for all of the skeleton, all of that is laid down in the first few weeks in the trimester. The second trimester, the baby grows a lot, a lot of um, the organs further develop. And the third trimester is that final stage before birth where the baby is really preparing to be able to survive in the external environment. So if we go over some pictures of this, right, the baby does not look very human until about weeks nine, which is why it's then considered a fetus. Here you can see all of the different um, time periods for when certain things develop as well if you want to pause it. So we start with fertilization. Within just a few weeks, we already have what looks like a early small human, right? At about a month old, the baby is going to look like that. All of the major organs are already in place after just a month, but clearly it needs to develop a lot. It's still about the size of like a jelly bean. Okay, so it develops over time to get a bit larger and larger. Through differentiation, certain cells become to have certain specialized functions for all of the different organs. And we end up with a really developing baby, right, that's about ready to be delivered about nine months later. So let's look at the effects of pregnancy on the mother because the mother is going to have to undergo a lot of changes to make all that happen from one cell to a whole baby. So usually if we think about pregnancy, we think of morning sickness being a symptom. So the gastrointestinal system is affected because elevated levels of progesterone and estrogens during pregnancy can cause morning sickness and kind of upset stomach. Heartburn is going to be common because the organ around the fetus are going to be crowded. The uterus can go as high as the xiphoid process on the sternum, so right where your ribs kind of meet in the center. And that's going to press all the other organs into a cramped space, which can cause heartburn or constipation. So again, this is showing where the uterus reaches at the different weeks. And you can see that by the time of pregnancy um, and By the time of delivery, 
that the baby is ready to go. It's really high up. So here it shows you how the fetus takes up so much space in the abdomen, pushing all the organs kind of out of place. So urinary system, well, that bladder is being pushed on, okay? So the uterus compresses the bladder, causing incontinence, meaning you can't really hold your pee and feelings of always needing to go because the bladder just does not have much space to expand. And the kidneys have additional burden of getting rid of the baby's waste in addition to the mother's waste, which produces more urine to begin with. The respiratory system can have some effects as estrogen causes the nasal mucosa to kind of swell and be congested. Breathing rate might increase as more oxygen is needed for the fetus as well, and difficulty breathing can occur in later stages of pregnancy. For the cardiovascular system, this is crazy to me. Blood volume needs to increase by 25 to 40 percent, which makes sense. You need a lot more blood to meet the needs of the fetus to provide all the oxygen and nutrients, and also act as a safeguard against blood loss during labor. In order to get all that extra blood to the fetus, blood pressure goes up and pulse usually increases, so the heart rate increases. Varicose veins are common because the uterus is kind of pressing on pelvic blood vessels, preventing the flow of blood up through the legs from the veins, which can cause those veins to kind of buckle and bulge, which is what calls var causes varicose veins. For the integumentary system, you may have heard, oh, pregnant women can get a hairy belly. And that is because pregnancy hormones, mainly estrogen, pause hair in the growth slash resting phase called catagen, right? And the shedding phase, telogen of hair, is delayed, meaning less hair is lost and the hair appears thicker and healthier. Now, this might be great, right? It causes fewer hairs falling out. Ladies appear to have thicker hair but it could also increase body hair. Another change to the integumentary system is a dark line forming on the belly. This is called, called linea nigra, okay? And that is caused by a hormone produced by the growing placenta that causes more melanocytes to produce more melanin, which is gonna cause darker pigmentation. Me on the nipples and also on a line down the middle of the pregnant woman. All right, guys, that is pretty much it for today. This is demonstrating all the changes that occur during pregnancy, and this woman had triplets, so that's crazy. All right, tomorrow we will talk about birth.